Hello and welcome to this video about the updates to Lightroom Classic and Lightroom CC for 2023, which was released in October of 2022. Uh, there will be a total of three videos in this little series. The first video, which is this one, will cover the healing brush, object selection, subject selection, sky selection, and background selection, and show you how to use those tools in some different use cases. Uh, the other videos I will also link below in the description down below, and uh, there you go. So uh, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below, and I'll be glad to answer them and give you a hand with Lightroom Classic and CC. So here we go. So I'm going to start demonstrating these edits in Lightroom Classic and CC uh, using the healing brush tool. Uh, the healing brush tool in both applications works pretty much the same. Uh, the interface is pretty similar. You can access the healing brush in Lightroom Classic here uh, below the histogram in the toolbar and in Lightroom CC. And in Lightroom CC, it's over here on the side. Uh, it's the Band-Aid icon. Right below the Band-Aid icon in Lightroom CC is the masking icon, and we will be using that for subject selection, uh, sky selection, background selection, and object uh, selection as well. So uh, that's where we'll access that in Lightroom CC. I'm gonna do most of the work in Lightroom Classic because that's the one I use the most, uh, but the interface works pretty much the same. Uh, slightly different, uh, maybe just in location of things, but the way you use the tools will be the same in both uh, editions of the software. So the first tool we'll use here is the e healing tool. Uh, go ahead and click on that to activate it and you will see there are three modes here. The first mode is content aware remove. The second mode is healing mode. And the third mode is clone mode. The clone mode, would, what that will do is you will brush an area and it will replace that area with an exact copy of another area from the photo. I hardly ever use that. I'm not gonna demonstrate that, but I will demonstrate both the healing and content aware remove tool. So both of the, the tools, the content aware remove and the healing option are what I call distraction removal tools. They will get rid of things in your photo that you wish weren't there and you can't really crop out, but you need to get rid of them. Uh, think of it as a light version of Photoshop inside of uh, Lightroom. So it's pretty powerful, it's pretty amazing, and here's how you use it. To get started uh, with the healing tools, I'm gonna use the Content Aware Remove. And to use that tool, I'm gonna click on it, and what I wanna remove is this buoy here in the water. This is an object in the photo that I couldn't remove physically from the photo, which is ideal, but it's relatively easy to remove here with software. So with the Content Aware Remove tool selected, what I wanna do is make my brush size just larger than the object I wanna remove. So you can change the brush size in three different ways. Uh, I'm gonna use the scroll wheel on my mouse to make it larger or smaller. You can also use the size uh, as well as the square bracket keys on your keyboard. So with the brush the size I want, I'm gonna start slightly above the subject I wanna remove, click, hold, and pull down. And you'll see a white outline defining the brush, and then you continue down and a little bit below the subject in this case, and I'm gonna let go, and Lightroom's gonna do some math and some calculation, and it's gonna do what it can to remove that object. Um, it did a good job. If you didn't like the, the results, you can click refresh here to get another round of changes there, and it'll do a different edit. Uh, and if you don't like that one, click refresh again uh, until you like it. Now, if you don't like it at all, another option is to choose a new selection area with this tool, and you do that on a Macintosh by holding down command and dragging where you want it to to make a new selection from. So I'm gonna do just command drag down here. That'll be my area to select from and it'll, it'll resample based on that selection area. That's actually worse in this case. So I'm just gonna undo that to get a, a better selection, which was the automatic selection. So that's how this tool works. I'm gonna undo that to show you another way to do the same effect, which is some way simpler and a little more control. Uh, it's back in the olden days, which was before October of 2022. Uh, this is how we did this. So it's using the other option in the healing tools, and that is the healing brush. So first I'm gonna reset this to just delete everything. And now I'm gonna use the healing brush 
and I'm gonna do the same thing. Notice now in the healing brush selection tool, I have two additional options in addition to the size of the brush, I now have the feather option, which is the softness of the edge of the brush, and the opacity option, which is how much of this brush will cover up what was originally there. I usually leave opacity at 100% when I'm completely removing objects. And then in this case, I'm gonna use the feather right around 50. That's kind of a nice middle ground. I like it. So I'm gonna start again above the subject, click hold, and drag down, uh, cover up the subject that I wanna delete, and then Lightroom is gonna automatically select. And in this case, it selected poorly. <laughs> so it's simple to move this. I'm gonna click on the target, I mean the source, excuse me. The target is where you draw, the source is where it's gonna sample from, and I'm just gonna click and hold and move this sample and watch the preview uh, until I get uh, a good sample and preview that looks like uh, there was nothing there originally. Uh, as you move the uh, source around, you might have to move slowly depending on the speed of your computer. There's a lot of intensive computing stuff going on here, so be patient if your computer's a little slower. Once you're good, uh, you can just click close and that will close the tool and return you back to normal editing. In this case, I wanna keep going. Uh, I don't quite like that edit, so I'm gonna click on the tool again and click a new, click and drag to move this around and click a little better selection and make that thing disappear. We'll try that one, click close again. That's a little better. So that's the basics of how this tool works. The healing brush tool works best on organic, non-repeating patterns. So like the water in this case, uh, leaves and grass and skin and other things where there's not a repetition pattern. So when you draw the healing brush, what you're drawing is a target area, and then the source will be the exact same size, shape, and orientation so that they have to match each other. You need a source that will match your target in size, shape, and orientation so it can sample from it and replace the contents. So it doesn't work well on like a brick wall pattern, won't work very well, or other where you have a lot of perspective changes and you would have to match the perspective changes with angles. So um, that won't work well with the healing brush tool. Another situation where the healing brush tool doesn't work very well is where two high contrast edges meet. And when that case, what you'll often get is, is a smudge or some blur. And I'll show you that really quickly on this photo. So once again, with the healing brush, the healing option, I'm gonna try and remove this uh, rope tie down here on the dock. So what I'm gonna do is just click hold and brush again like we did before, and I'm gonna let go. And you can see it's, this is another example of where you need a, a source that is the same size, shape, and orientation. So the source that's kind of the same size, shape, and orientation is over here. Uh, but because of that high contrast edge and as well as that straight line, it's hard to line up, hard to get a good source that's gonna match that uh, both in tone and in texture. So that's one case where this does not work well. So I'm just gonna hit the delete key with that uh, brush selected and that'll remove that. Uh, for editing existing brushes, it'll show you a little band-aid. So if you put your mouse over the Band-Aid icon for the healing brush use, you will see the target with the Band-Aid on it and a line connecting it to the source. So the next photo I wanna work on has a couple things that are a good use case for the healing brush and the Content Aware Remove tool. So the first place we'll start is with the healing option and we're gonna remove a bunch of sensor dust spots, which happens on your camera when you take your lens off and particles get in there from just live in life. So uh, there's a bunch of them and I'm gonna start with the ones that are over here. I'm gonna change my brush size using the scroll wheel to make it smaller. So just a click will remove that. Um, so now it's operating just in a single click mode rather than brushing. So there's some over there, a couple up here. So there's about six, seven of these guys in this photo that I'm gonna quickly remove. I also wanted to use this photo because it's a good example of when not to use or the limits of the healing brush tool. Uh, these lens flares down here in the lower right of the photo that's coming from pointing the camera into the sun, I can't remove with the healing brush option because I don't have a source, let's say down here if I brush 
and I try and remove that, I don't have a source that's the same size, shape, and orientation. I have a similar size and shape over here, but it's the wrong orientation. It's going a different direction. Uh, again, the profiles is changing. The perspective, I mean, is changing over here. Wrong size and color. So it just really doesn't work. A couple more distractions to get rid of in this photo, and that includes the top left uh, little tree branch. So I'm going to use the healing brush for that real quick with just one click, and that'll get rid of that. In the over here on the top right, it's a larger area. So what I'm going to use for this is the content aware remove tool. And again, I'll just brush and it'll show you where you've brushed. Make sure you brush all the way inside of here. Let go and magically it removes that tree branch in the top right corner. The, the content aware remove tool option is new in the, the 2023 version of the software. And so I'm gonna go ahead and try it on these lens flares down here to show you that it still doesn't really work. Uh, so I'll just start down here, click, hold, drag over this one flare and let it work for a second. And it does an okay job, but it's picking up the, I think it's using this as a sample area. So even if just trying that, let's try that as well. Still no good. So again, the limits of this tool, both the healing and the content aware remove tool in Lightroom are that they're simple to use, but they're not quite as powerful as some of the specific selection tools in Photoshop that you might want to use to remove that. So while these tools are simple and accessible and I love them and use them all the time, they do have some limits. It's good to be aware of what they are. I'd like to do one more example using the uh, healing option of the uh, healing brush tools to show you how another use case of this in a kind of a real world example, uh, a way to simplify a photo and keep the distractions to a minimum. So on this photo, there's a number of distractions pulling your attention away from this student's face. And the first one is the HP logo on the laptop. Anything that's, anytime you have words or letters, your brain's gonna try and read them and pay attention to them. So we don't want that. Also, we have the little uh, Chromebook logo here, this light switch on the wall, this plain wall with nothing on it except a couple of things, including this light switch. And then this panel over here that we'll also remove. So I'm gonna select my healing brush again and choose the healing brush option. And for the next step, I'm just gonna simply go over to the light switch here on the wall and click once and that'll remove that. This is a quick and easy removal because the sample area is so large and simple. Come over to the HP logo, make my brush a little smaller, click it once. Again, a simple replacement because the texture around it is so simple to replace it with. And then make my brush smaller and then just a little quick brush right to left here to remove the Google Chrome logo. And then last step is this shadow of this panel on the wall. And I'm gonna do that in three brush strokes because we're gonna, I don't wanna bump up against these chairs. And if I do it in one, it's kind of easy to do that. So. Just trust me on this, this is gonna work. So I'm gonna go with a, a brush that's about uh, 78 on my screen, and here we go. So I'm just click and hold at the top, brush down, and, and just stop uh, just above that red chair on the left. So the reason I'm stopping just above the chair is because if I go into the chair, you get this smudge, looks like the chair's on fire, where it's trying to blend with a little bit of that edge of the chair. So uh, I'm just going to move that target back up and out of the way of the chair and then move over to the right side and click and hold and brush down and not hit either of those chairs. And that looks good. Now the trick is here, I can't start at the right or the left because there's an existing brush there. So uh, if I put my mouse over it, what it wants to do is select the existing brush. So what I'm gonna do instead is start in the middle of this area, click, hold, and then drag. I'm gonna go right and then left and then let go. And again, the sample is easy to do for this because it's just a plain wall. So quickly and easily you have removed distractions from the photo. 
So when I'm done with my edits, I simply click close and uh, now I can see the photo without the icons showing where the spot removal happened. So a quick way to see what the photo looks like without these edits is to click this little toggle uh, at the bottom of the healing brush panel. And then we'll see what it looked like before with those distractions in place and then after with the distractions removed. When you're done with the tool again, just click close and you can return to editing with uh, by clicking on this uh, icon here in the top left of the toolbar area. For the next sequence of photos, I'm going to use some of the really cool artificial intelligence masking tools that are, are part of Lightroom Classic and Lightroom CC to select the subject, select the background, make some edits, and then also I'm going to do on another photo, I'm going to select the sky uh, and just quickly and easily with one click and then make some edits to the sky. So starting with this photo of uh, a raven at the Tower of London, what I'd like to do in this photo is mainly bring more attention to the raven. So uh, I'm going to make some edits to the raven separate from some edits to the background. And it's really quick and easy to do that with the new masking tools. So here we go. So to get started with the masking tools, the masking tool option is on the far right. It's the circle with a dashed line around it. So if you click that, it will bring up the masking panel. And at the top, we have three options, subject, sky, and background. We're gonna start here with the subject. So if I click on subject, it does this automatic magical selection of the Raven. Um, and I do need to make a little modification here. Uh, you'll notice that in red, where it's showing what is selected and what will be edited, there is some red selection down here on the rock the raven is sitting on. So I need to modify this mask just a little bit before we get started. And here's how you do that. So I'm going to click on the mask. And then what I'm going to do next is click on subtract because I want to remove from the mask. So click on subtract. And how do I want to remove? I have lots of different ways I can remove things. I'm going to keep it simple for this and use a brush to basically erase where uh, I don't want this to be changed. So I'm gonna click on the brush and now I'm in subtract mode. Notice my brush has a minus sign in it. I'm gonna make the brush much smaller because I'm working on a smaller area. So I'm gonna just brush here where I wanna remove red from the area I don't want changed, which is this rock. So just a quick brush, get rid of that, all is good. So now I just have red on the raven. So with, again, with my mask selected, so I'm gonna come back up here and just click on the mask. I'm gonna now make some changes to the Raven. And what I wanna do here is make the Raven just a little darker, a little more dramatic, turn up the contrast. So notice this is only affecting the Raven. I'll make it real dramatic so you can see. It's only affecting in that red area. So this is really powerful, really simple, removes a lot of friction to making edits. Uh, on just selected parts of your photo. So this is really, really fun. Uh, a little negative on the black, so I'll add some claret texture. So you can see the feathers a little more, a little clarity as well. And that feels good on the Raven. So next, what I wanna do is to make the Raven stand out from the background just a little bit more. I wanna make some edits to the background. So I have my mask panel already open. I wanna create a new mask. So I'm gonna click this plus sign up here at the top where it says create new mask. And then now what I wanna do is select the background. Click on that. And uh, now it's selected in red, everything but the Raven basically. So I'm just gonna go ahead and make those edits to that area. So once I start making the edits, the mask will uh, hide. So I'm not seeing the change back there. So the edit I'd like to make to this background is to make the background just a little bit brighter. And what that'll do is create more separation from the Raven, more contrast in tone. Additionally, what I'm gonna do here to again cr create more contrast is reduce the saturation back there just a little bit, uh, reduce contrast back there. Uh, and that just helps the Raven stand out just a little bit more. One of the cool things about these tools is you can always go back and change your mind. Now that I've seen this for just a minute, what I wanna do is I wanna make another edit to the Raven. Two ways to select and edit the previous area you've edited. So I can click here on the pin that defines that and now it's selected that mask or I can click here in the mask panel and click the mask that I want. So in this case, I have the Raven selected, the subject selected, and what I wanna do is just increase the shadows a little bit. So I wanna see just a little bit more of the Raven. 
Uh, it was a little too dark, uh, but now uh, I like that better. And so I think this one is done. So when I'm done with my edits, again, I can click on the close over here to complete that. Or if I want to make other edits to the photo, to the uh, overall photo, I would click on the edit icon. And that brings me back to the basic panel and all the other panels on the right hand side. The next edit I'd like to make is to this photo and we're going to again use the mask panel and this time I want to start with the sky. So I'm going to click on the mask panel to open that up and then click the sky and it's going to do some amazing math and figure out where the sky is and where the sky isn't and select the sky and show it in red. So once it's selected, all I have to do is make the edits I want, which in this case, I'm going to make the sky darker to make it more dramatic. I don't want to go that far, but you can see how far I could go. Uh, so I'm going to go right about here with the sky. And then uh, also I want to go add some dehaze to the sky that will bring out some more texture and drama. Again, I don't want to go too far. I don't want it to be super duper obvious, just kind of obvious that I've made an edit. Uh, so add a little dehaze there. Might also add just a little bit of contrast. Uh, so overall, what I've done is just make the sky more dramatic even than it was, a little bit more like it felt like on the day I was there. Uh, and that's the result of this photo. One thing I like to do when I'm done with an edit or I've made the, at least the first pass at the edit is to double check that I haven't done too much. So an easy way to do that is to come back to the, the mask panel. And in this case, I want to go to the sky mask. And if I just click and hold on that eye icon, it'll turn off the edit I just made. It'll just hide it for a second. If I let go, it'll bring it back. So that's a quick way to decide if that specific edit is maybe too much or not quite done yet. Uh, so in this case, it still feels like a, just a little much on the exposure. So I'm going to brighten it back up just a little bit. And I think that looks good. The next tool I want to show you how to use is the object selection tool. This is new in the 2023 version of Lightroom Classic and Lightroom CC, which was released in October of 2022. So back in the days before this, last month, um, you would have to do this with a manual brush to select an area and it was slower. It wasn't real slow, but it was not as quick as this. So again, this is another way to reduce friction, make some edits that are, are really powerful and simple and can help transform your photo and shape attention to the way you want it. So I have my mask panel open and I'm going to click on objects. So I click on objects. So the way this tool works is I'm going to brush in the area that I want to select. The area I want to brush in this photo is the stone arch above the woodwork because what I want to do is increase contrast so that I can draw more attention to the wood rather than the stone. They're both similar colors right now, similar brightness. So what I want to do is adjust the color temperature of the stone arch as well as darken it just a little bit. But first I have to select it. So with the select subject selected, I have two ways I can select my subject. I can use a brush, which is what I'm at right now, or I can use an area select where I would do something like that and draw an area. For this photo, I'm not going to use the area select because there's the area is in a regular shape. So for this, I will use the brush because I need to custom select where I want this to be selected. One of the great things about using this brush selection to select an object is you don't have to be very precise. So I'm just going to go really quickly. You do have to keep your mouse held down and do this in one pass. <laughs> so you select everything, but you don't have to be super precise. So I usually go around the edges quickly as fast as I can uh, using a relatively big brush. So it'll help me go faster and just go and brush, brush, brush just like being in kindergarten and coloring in your coloring book or mowing the lawn. That's what it feels like, <laughs> these two, this operation. Boom. So let go when it's done and it's selected most of what I wanted. You'll notice in the top left, it did not select this area. I'm not sure why, but uh, it's a simple fix. So all I have to do is in the mask panel, underneath where it says object one, I'm going to click add and I'm going to use the brush to add and just 
make my brush larger with the scroll wheel and brush back in here that I want selected. That was fast and easy. And you'll notice the mask did a great job of following the curve of the arch and, and not selecting much in the way of the shadow. Um, so it's much, much faster to do it this way than trying to use a, a brush tool to, to define this area and then make the edit. As I mentioned, the edit I wanna make is to make this a little darker. So I'll make that darker with the exposure adjustment. And I'm gonna make this a little cooler, uh, again, to help create contrast. So in the temperature slider, I'm gonna make that go to the left towards blue just a little bit, not a lot, cause that gets obnoxious. Uh, just a little bit, I'm about minus six or seven. So just a little tiny adjustment there, a tiny adjustment in exposure. And there we go. We've created the additional contrast I want to really highlight the woodwork in this photo. So there you have it. Some new editing tools and ways to work inside of Lightroom and some new ways to work with the old tools inside of Lightroom for 2023. If you have any questions about any of the things I've discussed in this video, please leave a comment in the link below and I'll be glad to answer that. Just a reminder, I do have two other videos about uh, the new features in Lightroom 2023 and the links to those are in the description below. So I hope that was helpful and I look forward to seeing you in those other Lightroom videos. Bye for now.